What up guys, Nick Caputo here. In this video, we're gonna talk about seven reasons to breathe through your nose rather than through your mouth. So let's get right into it. Reason number one is nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is produced in the sinuses as well as in most of the tissues in your body, but predominantly in the sinuses. Once it gets into the blood from the nose breath down into the lungs through the sinuses, what it does is it dilates your blood vessels. It signals them to relax and soften. So this is called vasodilation. Vasodilators are common in pre-workouts and uh, like pump supplements. Nitric oxide is key for getting a solid pump. You know, your, your blood vessels dilate, you get more blood flow to your muscles, you know, better pump, better strength, better performance. And it also helps to eliminate lactic acid. So even that, uh, that soreness doesn't come as often, it doesn't stay as long when you have more nitric oxide production. So nasal breathing for nitric oxide is reason number one. Reason number two, we have cilia, which are the air filters of the body. They are these little tiny hairs that line the respiratory tract from the tip of your nose all the way down to the bottom of your lungs. They are the first line of defense against debris and unwanted things in the air. So you definitely want to make sure that you're using your cilia to filter your air. There is no cilia in the mouth because the mouth is not part of the respiratory tract. Really, you should only be using your mouth to speak, to sing, and to eat. Otherwise, it should be closed. So here is a visual example of the difference in quality between mouth breathing and nasal breathing. Obviously, this is a joke. That's water, not air. So moving on, we have facial structure. So breathing through your nose can literally change the entire structure of your face and make just about anyone better looking. It doesn't matter how ugly you are. You can get slightly less ugly with nasal breathing. And for some people, it really can change like the entire way that you look. So some attributes like uh, jawline definition, the amount that your chin either recedes or comes out, the straightness of your nose, the straightness of your teeth, the definition in your cheekbones, your head, and the posture, all correspond to whether or not you are nasal breathing or mouth breathing and your tongue posture. If you're mouth breathing, your tongue posture is definitely off. If you're nasal breathing, your tongue posture may or may not be on point or off. So just to put it into perspective, the difference between the two, I have my dad's transformation. This is personally like my father who made the transition from nasal breathing to uh, from mouth breathing to nasal breathing and look at the difference in his face you can tell the difference in his jaw and his chin you can tell the difference in the way that his cheekbones are defined his posture I mean he got tanner this was also he did other things at the same time while he was switching from mouth breathing to nose breathing and you know change in season several months went by etc but I mean the difference in the way that his face is shaped from mouth breathing to nose breathing is pretty remarkable and undeniable. So moving on from facial structure, we have sleep quality, which is arguably the most important point I want to make in this video. Sleep is one of the most important foundational pillars of health. It doesn't matter how on point you are with everything in your life. If you have poor sleep quality, you have poor life quality. So nasal breathing during sleep is so key, and most sleep issues are... A result of mouth breathing or like nutritional stuff and you know like light there's a lot of things that can fuck up your sleep and i'll probably do another video on things you know seven things that destroy your sleep quality but sleep quality is so important and nasal breathing is a key aspect of high quality sleep if you're breathing through your mouth while you're sleeping you are undoubtedly not optimizing your sleep quality moving on to number five we have athletic performance because nasal breathers inevitably have higher levels of nitric oxide in their blood, increased oxygen uptake per breath because of that nitric oxide and something we're going to go over in the next slide, you know, you have enhanced blood flow from the nitric oxide and nasal breathers often have higher CO2 thresholds because they breathe more slowly compared to mouth breathers. So they are consistently at an advantage from an athletic standpoint. And this corresponds with strength, endurance, uh, mental clarity, all aspects of athleticism and high performance in any kind of sports. So next is mental clarity. So when you breathe through your nose compared to your mouth, you do experience a significant increase in mental clarity, which is seriously remarkable for some people. Some people think they are depressed or in a rut or whatever. Start nasal breathing consistently throughout the day. Start really doing the breathwork exercises and realize like really they were just chronically exhausted, mentally exhausted and cloudy. 
especially if you wake up in the morning and you're not clear, that's definitely a sign that you're most likely breathing through your mouth while you're sleeping. So breathing through your nose while you're sleeping and, I mean, while you're awake, obviously, will enhance your mental clarity. As you can see from this diagram on the screen, you have the olfactory nerves and the olfactory bulbs in the sinuses. And as you get air into that sinus cavity, the air is directly communicating with the midbrain. Now, I mean, nerves are communication pathways, so the air is communicating with the brain through those nerves. So when you breathe through your mouth, as you can see from the diagram, the air goes in, it goes right down to the lungs, it misses the sinuses. So it also misses out on that nitric oxide, and it also misses out on the air resistance that actually does contribute to more oxygen uptake because it enhances the amount of CO2 in the bloodstream because you're not breathing out as quickly. It forces you to slow down your breathing when there's more resistance, which is actually a very good thing. So last but not least, number seven, we have sexual performance. Nose breathers fuck better than mouth breathers. That is an undeniable fact. I will debate this with absolutely anyone. Um, basically, with the nitric oxide, you're getting better blood flow. I mean, nitric oxide is basically Viagra. You're getting more blood flow. You're getting higher quality sleep, so better energy, more athletic performance. So you're stronger when you're actually you know, clap of cheeks, you could actually have more strength and endurance for that act. And it also helps you last longer. When you nasal breathe, you also tend to breathe slower. Slower breathing is the key to controlling the trigger of ejaculation and lasting longer. Also, higher levels of nitric oxide strengthen the hypothalamus, which is responsible for producing gonadotropin releasing hormone. So that is the hormone, the initial hormone that begins all of the processes for all of the androgen hormones to be created, including testosterone. So if you want to increase sex drive, nasal breathing is one of many things that you can do. And I will be releasing a course called Top T, all about testosterone uh, optimization for men. So keep an eye out for that one if this topic specifically interests you men out there. So that's the seven points. If you want to learn more, check out my Breathwork Basics online course. It includes 22 video lectures, a full e-textbook covering all the topics relating to proper breathing, different techniques and exercises and practices. And it also includes guided breathwork audio sessions. So you put your headphones on, you listen to the session, you listen to my voice with the music in the background telling you exactly how to breathe after you've already gone through the tutorials and the notes. So you know exactly what to do and you're guided through every step of the way. And you can really transition from mouth breathing to nose breathing and really take your breathing to the next level in order to take your life to the next level. I am the creator of the Caputo Method of Holistic Ease and Nine Pillar System. All nine pillars are absolutely imperative, in my opinion, for optimal health and human experience. Breathing, respiration is pillar number one. I do think that it is the most important, which is why it was the first course that I released. So check it out at the link in the description or at the caputomethod.com link tree, you know, slash um, Nick Caputo. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the page, like this video, share it with somebody who you think is a mouth breather, someone who looks like a mouth breather, who you think could benefit from this information. That's it for this video. See you in the next one, guys. Much love. Peace.